The Charlie Reimer Golf Show, starring Charlie Reimer. Hey, okay, let's pick up the tempo here. Charlie Reimer here, and welcome to my new show, where we do things my way. As a former golf pro and media personality, I know golf. But this isn't going to be your grandfather's golf show. I'm bringing you conversations with celebs and golf greats, getting off the course and out on the water, and even getting into some good eats. This is the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. Keep it in the fairway, folks. Today in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, I'm with the lead guitar player from one of the world's most beloved bands, Hooting the Blowfish. I'm Charlie Reimer, and this is Riding with Reimer. No, that, that can't be him. I'm looking for a pro. It's supposed to be Charlie Reimer. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, buddy? How, How you, you doing? doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, my goodness. It's my favorite rock star, Mark Bryan. I got a great golf course for us uh, right here. This is a river club. Let's go. Let's get them loaded up. It looks beautiful. What's going on here? It looks like we can go off course with this thing. Let's talk about golf. <laughs> uh, so, how long, how long have you been playing golf? Oh man, since I was a teenager, but um, I didn't really take it seriously till Puggy Blackman, um, the former director of golf for USC. Yeah. Till he gave me lessons, and when he did, I, you know, my handicap improved, and I learned how to make a real turn on the golf ball. Yeah. So I've been playing seriously now for maybe 25 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Puggy was uh, my um, golf coach at In Georgia college. Tech. Yeah. That's, we're that's so cool. Packing. I love the full circleness of that story. So, I got two goldens. You got two gold. Got two golden retrievers, yeah. Have they been traveling with you any? They have. They've done the whole summer with us. They have a little <laughs> bunk on the bus and everything. It's great. I, I, I sometimes I'll take them out while I'm hitting golf balls, and uh, it's everything I can do to get the boy to stay because he thinks it's a game. He thinks he's supposed to be fetching them. <laughs> well, lucky for you, if he goes out to watch you hit golf balls, they don't have to go very far to retrieve them. <laughs> All right, Mark, so we got this beautiful island green par three. Yeah, what are, what are we hitting? It uh, looks like 150. Come on with me. We're not we're not doing anything conventional. Let's go. Come on. All Come right. on. <laughs> oh, what I want is three skips, jump over the bunker, and then up about 12 feet right of the flag. What club do you have in your hand? Four I've iron? got the four iron. OK. To hit it low, I like setting my hands and then holding them. I want to make sure yeah. at impact that this angle right here between the back of the right hand and the back of the right wrist is as sharp as it can be. That'll drive it right down under the water. That got three skims. Three skips. I'm going to put this off my back foot and attempt to hit it thin. You're thinking way too much. See the ball, be the ball. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> he did it. All right, how are you going to get this yellow ball plugged in the face of this bunker out of there and up on the green? Out of baby. You see him posing? <laughs> Making sure that the sand all drips off the club down onto my head. Come on, let me get you out of there. Yes, buddy. <laughs> well, on, a, on a serious note, um, what, what you and the band have been able to do with the Monday after the Masters all of these years. Yeah, I guess uh, this April will be our 26th year, and mm. we have a, um, a golf event for charity and a bunch of celebs coming in, and then we do a, we do a concert around it as well. So. Uh, just you could never foresee the success that we've had with that event. You know, it's something we maybe we could do for 50 years even. All right, Charlie, I think I'm just headed to that guide post out there for this one. Think I can carry it that far? No. <laughs> you got all of that one, didn't you? Yeah, it should be out there in the fairway somewhere. <laughs> do you have any questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. I really enjoyed your master's coverage. Um, oh. Yeah, it was really fun. You did a great job with oh, that. Oh, well, it thank was, you. It was fun. It, it's been uh, fun to get to do that. I like having fun with golf, but I guess I really am a golf nerd, especially well, when it comes to Augusta, because I grew up not too far from Exactly, there. and it showed yeah. that you can be that guy, too, that, you, that how much you respect the game and that you can you can handle it professionally without always making jokes about it. But we love that you can make jokes about it, too. <laughs> golf is different for everybody, don't you think? I always had this dream of having a course one day where you can just play in a, ba in a bathing suit if you want, you know. I mean, I just think there should be a looser code to golf in general as long as you're still respecting the game and respecting the players around you. If you do that golf course, can I be a member? 
Yeah, yeah, you might be my first member. I might have you help me design the damn thing. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, Charlie, thank you for having me out here today. What a beautiful golf course. Mm. Well, it's my pleasure to have you here. There's so many little hidden gems like this, River Club. Yeah. You come out for the first time, you're like, man, how come I hadn't played this golf course 100 times? All right, we got a couple Coming birdie putts here. Higher. All right. If I can make this one backwards through my legs, will you, uh, will you give me the match? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no way! No way! <laughs> God, you are the best, buddy. Thanks, dude. So much fun. Thanks Enjoyed again. it. What a great day. What a way to finish off. <laughs> I lose the match between the legs, backwards. Can I tell you? <sighs> You're great for my stress level. <laughs> a lot of fun, buddy. I love playing with you, man. Thanks for having me out. What a beautiful course. Well, you got it. I appreciate you riding with Reimer here at River Club in beautiful Pauley's Island, South Carolina. Let's do it again. Anytime, my friend. Stick around, because after the break, I'm going to catch up with the honorary president of the PGA of America. Welcome into the Charlie Reimer podcast. And uh, on this show, we talk about golf, we talk about life, we talk about things that I'm interested in or things that I want to talk about. And I'm thrilled to be joined now by the honorary president of PGA of America, Susie Whaley. We've been friends for a long time, Susie, back to calling some uh, golf together in our ESPN days. And um, nobody loves the game as much as you do. And even while you served your two-year term as president of PGA of America, I know you did a lot of teaching during that time period. I did, you're right. I absolutely love it. And yes, we even did some clinics together back in the day when we were calling some golf. So we had some great fun. Susie, I, I wanna to talk to you about um, the, the these tough times that we've uh, been through uh, and are still dealing with this pandemic and the lasting ramifications that it's going to have. A lot of industries, a lot of sports have really struggled. Does it surprise you that, that golf has, has really stood out during these challenging times? Of course, I'm surprised that we had a pandemic. I don't think anybody could have predicted that. And certainly out of respect for anybody that, that was ill uh, or is ill because of it, our heart goes out to them. Uh, but we are thrilled, to be honest with you, that golf has been a respite. And so many people have come into the game our core golfers are playing more. As you said, we have brand new golfers who never had picked up a club playing. I mean, we were up almost a half a million junior golfers just last year at the end of the year. So, you know, while I'm thrilled about all that, um, I want to give the credit where it's due is to our PGA professionals who are leading that charge. Um, one of the things that's been really neat for me is seeing all kinds of people playing golf, in particular uh, where I live here in Myrtle Beach, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of women out on the golf course. And as you reflect back on your two years serving as president of the PGA of America, what kind of things have you done to help female participation? I think just being a female in a leadership position um, has given people the opportunity to see that golf can be a game for them. And there are leaders that are females uh, within our sections that are really working hard to ensure that they have the same experience as anybody else uh, when they come to a facility to play. So as we strive to get more women to play the game, which of course is something all PGA professionals would love to have happen, and we have to put things in place that welcome them, uh, that make them feel a part of it, that make them feel a part of the community. Uh, where we're getting women together on golf courses, making matches for them, where they can play together in a socially distant way, but enjoy being at a new beginner level together. And I have another theory too about more women playing the game because I happen to be a female who loves this part of the game now. I love not raking and I love not pulling the pin out. <laughs> and so I think that's made it faster and more fun for men and women. Is that the way you see it? Try, trying different things and see what works. I mean, if you think about other games, you think about tennis, for example, as soon as you join a tennis club or a club that has tennis, you're immediately put on a team, no matter your level. So you have instant games, instant friends, and people to join in the fun with. And I think as we offer people community amidst our separation, I mean, people are really looking for connection. And if we can give that to them, whether it's virtual or whether it's at the course responsibly, more women are going to continue to play the game. As a teacher at heart, it seems to me like one of the biggest challenges in golf is that that first contact with golf. Are there ways where we can make that first touch 
may, maybe a little easier, a little more rewarding. Um, maybe figure out a way to, to set the hook early on, on, on new golfers. Yeah, I think there's so many ways we can do that. I mean, first being, uh, you know, re let's relax the rules right? Let's make sure when they arrive, they don't feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If they're coming in a, a workout outfit and it's to a public golf course, great. Let's great, come join us. We want you to be a part of this, right? And just help them feel a sense of success in managing their own game. Mm, I can't imagine anybody listening to you or watching you talk right now wouldn't want to get a club in their hands and get out on the golf course and hopefully have a teacher uh, that, that has even a fraction of your enthusiasm. Uh, Susie, thank you for your passion for the game, your authenticity, and mostly thank you for your service to this great game. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on your show. You got it, Susie. Sorry, folks, we got to cut you just a little bit short. But if you're interested in more of this interview with Honoré President of PGA of America, Susie Whaley, go to PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com. Nothing beats golf in Myrtle Beach. I'm showing off and playing some of our best courses, all while giving you some advice for your game. This is Charlie's Golf Tips. So the 18th here at River's Edge is one intimidating golf hole. You got out of bounds coming in on the left. You got water short, water right. And then this is a great example of a hole where you have to have a go-to shot. You gotta be able to eliminate one side of the golf course or the other. And for me, that's always gonna be a cut. So let me talk you through how I go about hitting a cut. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a line that I know if I hit the ball straight, it's gonna be okay. In this case, it's that pole in the middle of the fairway, which is a 150 yard marker. So I'm gonna use the line on the back of this golf ball. And as I tee this ball up, that line is gonna be going right at that 150 yard pole. So let's get this thing teed up. Get it headed the right direction. Yep, and that's right at that pole. Now then, my thought process becomes that line is the middle of the back of this golf ball. For me to get some left to right spin on it, I've got to get this club going to the outside of that line. So that becomes my total focus. I know if I hit it straight, at that 150, I'll be fine. Ideally, I'll start it at the 150 and it'll peel off to the right. What I can't do is hook it here. If I hook it, I'm done. Try to go outside of that line. I think that'll work. Definitely had some left to right in it. Completely took the out of bounds out of play. Sadly, things haven't gone very well for me. Here at 18 at River's Edge, I'm in a greenside bunker on a downhill lie with water beyond the flagstick. That's a shot that scares a lot of people. And I gotta tell you, it's a double black diamond. I mean, you're not gonna break your neck hitting this shot, but you can look silly doing it for sure. So let me walk you through the process of how to tackle this shot. The first thing you have to do is make sure you get your shoulders parallel to that slope. If you try to help this ball up in the air with your shoulders like this, which is a natural tendency, you're gonna hit it really fat or you're gonna hit it really thin every time. Okay, so I'm gonna get my shoulders parallel to the slope. I'm gonna get the ball up in my stance a little bit and I'm gonna make sure I break my wrists up and release them because I gotta get this club underneath the golf ball. All right, so let's see what we get. Shoulders parallel to the slope, ball forward, break my wrists. That's why they call me the big timer. So I've got this left to rider. Want to finish off with my par, be good Sandy from that greenside bunker. Now left to right putts or right handers can be pretty scary. And here's what happens. If your focus on a left to right putt is the hole, your eyes are looking at the hole, every time you're gonna miss that putt low to the right. So what you have to do is find a little blemish or a spot on the green. Some people can see a dot, some people can see a line, and you gotta focus on your intended start line. Now I've put a T out there to the left, right? If I focus on that T, forget about the hole, and I roll the ball to that T, the slope will carry the ball down towards the hole. Not looking at the hole, I'm looking at the T. And 
I love it when a tip works. I'm gonna pop in the clubhouse, but when I get back, we're gonna go for a nice cruise down the Waccamaw River. Today, I'm floating down the river with my good friend, Bill Golden. Some of the best conversations happen when the only thing on the agenda is nothing. So Bill, how cool is it that this is our backyard? It's unbelievable. It's like this area hasn't been touched in a thousand years. This is like my getaway. I mean, I, I just, I, I try to come out here a couple times a week and- uh, Is this where you are when I'm trying to call you? Exactly, there's no cell phone coverage back here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just occurred to me, how many, in your broadcast career, how many interviews have you done? You know, it's, it's funny that you ask that because when I first got into broadcasting, it's been 23, 24 years ago, Interviewing, I always thought, was like the easiest thing. And I butchered a few early on. Like, I did the worst interview you can imagine with Tiger Woods. <laughs> Bill McAtee, who uh, worked for a long time for USA Network and CBS, great guy. He was on the crew there. And the interview that I did with Tiger is a rain delay, and it was so bad. You know, this is right when Tiger was coming on strong. And, and I was so stressed when, when I was doing the live interview with him, that, that I was thinking of the next question rather than listening to what he was saying. And Bill gave me the best tip I've ever gotten. He said, find two or three questions that are generic questions that in any situation they would work and have them in your back pocket yeah. mentally. And every week I've ever worked, I've always done that. But I, I know you ask a short question, but... Uh, I was doing 200 plus live shows a year. Most of those are interview shows. I'd have to think about it, but I'd be well up into the thousands. Well, that's good because this is my first. <laughs> You're going to interview me? <laughs> you know, golf giveth and golf taketh away. Yeah. You know? I mean, when you look back at your career and your incredible junior career, do you still look back at that with, you know, unfinished business or what you could have done differently or... Golf is one of those things where people look at PGA Tour players and they're like, you know, look at that life. That's a, that's a great life. You know, let's say you're outside the top 40 or 50 in the world. You, you might only have two or three good weeks a year. And, and at that point, it's not about how well you play all the time. It's about how well you play when you're playing well. Right. And when, when my kids came along, I mean, I'm out on the road and I'm struggling with this game. Those tough weeks got really tough. Yeah. I just got to the point where I was never happy. Maybe there's something else for me. And so when I, when I look at my career, I played on tour for three years and I tried bits and pieces after that. I almost look at, that was a training time for what I do now. Yeah, sure. Right. So, so I'm not the least bit grumpy about it. Yeah. I think it was just the journey that I was supposed to be on. And, and um, if I hadn't have gone through that as a player, I don't think there's any chance I'd ever gotten into media. Yeah, and now it's part of your, it's de in your DNA, your personality is what you're known for and you've seen it and you've lived it and you know the guys. And... Charlie, you're one of the most popular golf personalities, broadcasters. You know, I've never ever heard anybody say anything negative about you. You don't get out Fans. much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that something that just comes automatic to you? Have you always been that way? I was, I was really struggling with my game. I lost my tour card. So I was having a conversation with Gary McCord, yeah. and he's like, what are you going to do? And I said, Gary, I'm going to get a job. He says, oh, no, hell no, don't get a job, because <laughs> golf pros hate it when other golf pros, yeah. you know, quit and get a job. They're like, no, 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 no. He said, you should be in TV. And uh, I said, Gary, I'm not qualified to be in it. Uh, I'm not qualified to be in TV. And he said, you are an idiot. That qualifies you to be on TV. Do you want me to get you an audition or not? I said, well, yeah, that'd be good. So the next day the phone rings and, and uh, that's how I got my first audition. And I've been fooling them ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, you and I, uh, I think you're the same age. And uh, I won't say that age. So you're 39 too? <laughs> But, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of look at life in chapters, you know, or segments. And I guess from a golf sense, maybe we're a little bit little bit into that back nine. <laughs> Done an incredible amount of accomplishments throughout your career, and you're taking on new challenges now. How do you see 
see that coming together. And I'm glad you asked that question because uh, your 2020 was was tough on me. I I had COVID, yeah. and and I had it bad. And that first 36 hours in the hospital, I I I wasn't real sure I was coming out of the hospital. And so I, I did a lot of reflecting, and and uh, I decided that what I was going to do, and however many holes I've got left. I'm really going to focus on doing some things that I want to do in great places with people that I want to be with, people that I love and people love me. Yeah. So, Bill, the bad news is that our afternoon cruise here in Myrtle Beach is coming to an end. You're right, but the good news is we can do this every afternoon. Matter of fact, <laughs> let's do it tomorrow. I'm in. <laughs> let's go grab some yeah. dinner. Out of baby. I'm a firm believer that laughter is a key to a happy life. And it's certainly a prescription for the tough times. And I'll bet you haven't had a single great moment in your life that didn't involve laughter with friends and loved ones, or at least a big smile if you were by yourself. Now, I'm not saying laughter is a cure to hitting three straight balls out of bounds to the right on number seven, but it's going to get you back to the golf course the next day. Same with life. Hope you've enjoyed the Charlie Reimer Golf Show and keep it in a fairway, folks. So, um, this is something I've always wanted to ask, and I'm I'm not real good in asking favors, but um, do do you think you could um, like, like get Darius Rucker's autograph for me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know actually.